Hey everyone, my name's Kieran and welcome to Top Deck TCG where today we're going to be talking about some tips to keep in mind when buying your first legendary card. Anyways, before we get into the video, please consider subscribing. I do a wide variety of flesh and blood content on the channel including deck techs, product reviews, box openings in the future. I've got a history box one coming this week. Oh, I can't wait. As well as just talking about my thoughts on the game in general and maybe just trying to help some players along the way. Anyways, let's get on with the video. Now, if you have done any kind of deck building at all in flesh and blood and looked up some deck lists online, I'm sure you will have come across the list of legendary cards that lots of people are included in, the, in their decks to give it some extra spice. Now there was a very early misconception in the game that legendaries were required to make a deck run and while there are some instances that that's true, thank you Stormstriders. So first and foremost, one thing that I always recommend that people don't do is to just go out and wildly buy legendaries for a deck that you want to build. If someone is talking to me about maybe they want to play Ninja, the last thing that I'm going to do just tell them to go out and buy a mask of momentum. Usually I try to recommend like some kind of steps that are a bit more inexpensive to see whether or not you like the class first. And then from there, go ahead and pick up a legendary if you really feel like this class is something you want to invest your time and more importantly, your money into. So these tips have been prompted by the announcement of the June Armory Kit, which includes a brand new car, actually three brand new cars, but a brand new cold foil, the Blossom of Spring, which reads as an action, you can destroy Blossom of Spring, gain a resource, and it has go again. Is it a wish.com tunic? Is it mom I want a tunic? No we already have a tunic at home tunic? Yes and no. I think it is a lesser tunic in a sense however I think that it could be the gap that some people need to save them having to buy a tunic in the future. So I would say that if you manage to pull a tunic or if you have one you bought one in the past Fantastic. I think that that's a great idea to use that in your deck in place of this card. I think that you'll probably get more utility out of it in most cases. Some fast blitz games, maybe not. However, uh, for 99 times out of 100, I would say Tunic is going to be better than this card. However, this card, I think, still has an important place in the game to give people an idea of whether or not they should be buying the tunic. Really, it's a gateway tunic if you think about it. Now, when we're talking about classic instructed, for sure, I think that that's true, but in Blitz, things are a little bit different. I think this card in some decks may actually be more useful than a tunic. The reason being is that sometimes if you need a resource early, like on turn one or turn two, then you will probably want this card over the tunic. It's only if you're doing it on your own turn. It's not an instant. The tunic still has that point. However, with Blitz games typically only lasting four or five turns in the current meta, you will only ever really get one resource out of your tunic anyway. So if you can get that resource on demand without having to build up counters, then in, as I say, in a few instances, this may actually be a better shout than buying a tunic. However, if you are thinking about buying Fandel Spring Tunic, I would say maybe try this card first, just to see whether or not that the Fandale Spring Tunic is going to be something that you'll get a lot of utility out of. Let me explain. Cards like this, I believe, serve to help players understand a mechanic of the game before they go out and spend a bunch of money on a legendary. So a very real world example that I came across in one of the playgroups that I would frequent is that there were some players that were looking to get into Runeblade. Runeblade's been very popular lately and I think that learning how to play the Runeblade class is very important considering Legend Story Studios love making Runeblades. But Grasp of the Arknight seems to be the legendary that fuels a lot of the craziness and arcane madness that goes on in these decks. The ability to spend two resources at the start and create a rune chant of just out of thin air can just give a little extra spice to some turns and allow you to kill your opponent maybe a little bit quicker or present a different type of damage, turn on some on hit effects, any and or all of the above. However, this card is getting increasingly expensive and even with the release of the white border version in the first set of history packs, it still hasn't quite done a lot to quell the price of this card. It's still in excess of $100 at the time of making this video. So if you want to learn Runeblade, what would I recommend you do rather than go out and just buy one of these cards? Well, I think that cards like Vex and Quillhand have a really important place in the game for this reason. So if a legendary card has an effect, in the game and that effect is something that is highly desirable like the ability to create a rune chant then try and find another card that has that same effect and practice with that instead it tends to be a more inexpensive way of seeing whether or not you find this effect beneficial or whether it's something that gels with your playstyle. and then if it is and it's something that you're getting used to you can go out and buy the legendary that you want as i say in my very real world example i had a friend who really wanted to pick up grasp of the arc knight and ultimately ended up pulling a vex and quill hand from a booster of everfest 
prize that he picked up for entering a tournament. And so, he ultimately went on to win our local pro quest with a chain deck, which included Vex and Coalhand in place of Grasp of the Arknight. Now, I'm not saying that Grasp is useless and that couldn't have helped. I may have had an easier time. I'm not sure if he would have had an easier time or not using Grasp over Vex and Coalhand. However, I would say now that his purchasing decision, if he was to go and buy a Grasp of the Arknight, is probably made a lot easier by the fact that he knows how that that effect works within his deck. Let me give you another example. So one card that I hear people wanting more than anything else, it's the card that I hear people wanting to buy above all others is a Fandale Spring Tunic. So Fandale Spring Tunic so far has been printed three times and it has again, it commands a pretty ridiculous price. Even the white border version is insane money, like £130 at the time of recording this video. So for people who aren't sure, Fandale Spring Tunic reads, at the start of your turn, if Fandale Spring Tunic has less than three energy counters, you may put an energy counter on it. Then at instant speed, you can remove three energy counters from Fandale Spring Tunic and gain a resource. It also blocks for one, which destroys the equipment. So that extra one block is quite nice. Now, this card has a lot of utility in many decks. It's generic. It is used to get like an extra little resource if you need one just to push your turn over the edge and just make some craziness happen. But ultimately, this is an effect that just gives you extra resources or in a roundabout way makes something that you're about to do one resource cheaper. So with that in mind, we can find some alternatives that you can play in place of this, namely the new card that we're getting in the June Armory. Now, this isn't quite as useful in some instances. Fendel Spring Tunic, you can create that resource at instant speed, whereas the Blossom of Spring needs an action to do so. However, you can still, on your own turn, most of the time, break the piece of equipment and gain yourself a resource. Not quite the best, it doesn't block for one. It, it, it's not a Fandale Spring Tunic. If it was, it would be as expensive as one. However, it still gives you the effect of adding a resource and then you can play around with that. See if it's something that fits in your current build and if it does and you find some success with it or you find that you really enjoy that playstyle, then you can go ahead and purchase a Fandale Spring Tunic with a bit more information that you're gonna be spending your money wisely. And PSA in the middle of this, because I've had some people mention this to me, do not crack boxes to try and get the legend that you want. My goodness. I think I worked out that it's like if there's six legendaries in a set and you get one legendary in four boxes, uh, assuming you never get the same legendary twice, that means you'll have to open 24 boxes to get the legendary that you want. And if each box is like $70 or something, that's just maths that I don't even gonna do right now. At that point, you're best just finding out whether or not you like the legendary and then buying it afterwards. All too many times I've seen people crack boxes to try and get legendaries and get one that they don't want and then they go ahead and try and trade it. Maybe they don't get the same amount of money when they sell it. They have to put more money to it. Or I've seen people buy legendaries and then immediately find out that they don't like the class and then have to go ahead and sell it afterwards, maybe losing some money in the process. I don't like seeing people get into situations like that. I think it gives people feel bads around the game that they're trying to play. And I ultimately want people to have a good time. Also, just as a PSA, if you are buying legendaries to try and give yourself an edge, if you aren't versed in playing the class, you're probably not going to experience the edge that you want from it. What I find is that legendary equipment usually gives you a slight edge that really only means a lot whenever you're playing at like a higher level. But if you're just starting out or you're playing some Blitz games with friends or you're just kind of like mucking around with the game, then I don't think that legendaries are required. If you pull one or you have one, play it. Great. That's fantastic. But I don't think that it's going to give people like a massive competitive edge whenever they're starting out in Blitz. It's certainly not a pay to win in this game, I don't think. If you know of any, please let me know. So, thank you very much for watching this video. It's a bit shorter than some of the other videos, but it's something that I feel is very important. I see a lot of people talking about legendaries and wanting to trick out their deck with lots of legendaries and win all the pro tours and all that other stuff. However, I think that we need to kind of temper some expectations and kind of not have people spending ridiculous amounts of money on cards that they may not even use. Also, the new Blossom of Spring, aside from the artwork being fantastic, do you like this card? Are you excited to put it in any of your Blitz decks or Classic Constructed decks? Let me know down below if you can think of any other uses for it other than just being a entry level tunic for new players. And also get subscribed. I do a wide variety of flesh and blood content on the channel. We talk about decks, we talk about products, we talk about stuff like this, whatever this was. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.